Okay, next up we have uh, Fernando Nobrega Santos. He is a physicist by training, but he now works as a research associate at the multi-scale division of the Department of Anatomy and Neurosciences at the FUMC, and, uh, and is also a research fellow at the Institute for Advanced Studies at the UFA. And he is going to tell us about a multivariate signaling processing pipeline for building higher order network hubs from resting state fMRI signals. Take it away, Fernando. Yes, sir. Hi. Good morning. First of all, thanks for the attention and for bringing me here. As I was introduced, I'm a theoretical physicist by training in applied mathematicians. Only by the past three years, I work in neuroscience. And that uh, creates lots of synergy, interdisciplinarity. And uh, the paradigm of network neuroscience is kind of built upon uh, signal process between pairs of areas in the brain. So you get through, let's say, fMRI, two areas of the brain, time series, and you correlate those time series to create a functional network. And this bothered me as a mathematician because, uh, let's say, I met Priyanka a couple of times. I talked with Linda, the PI of my lab, multiple times. But we never talk to three, the three of us together. And then in neuroscience, it's, it happens that you approximate the communication between points A and B, B and C, and C A in the brain has a triplet, and this is not necessarily the case. So we have billions of neurons, uh, trillions of synapses, but you, in functional MRI, most of the time, you only consider interaction between pairs. So the idea is then to build uh, some pipeline that we could uh, infer uh, communication in the brain across uh, multiple areas. So as an example, if you see like on the top, like in a standard network, it's a plan visualization, you only see circles, but actually if you see in a higher order, you will see lots of surface. So that's the idea we want to bring upon. So if you have a high order networks so or a network built upon high order interactions, you may see more than we see in a usual approach. So then uh, that's uh, the idea of the project. And I may say a, bi a bit about this kind of interaction. So the interaction could be synergistic, so it only exists among pairs. So if you see in this illustration, like people holding hands, you can only see the, the shape of a circle if you see the, all the interactions together. However, some interactions you can approximate. Like if you see, for instance, a, a group of uh, people marching, like the Ukrainian soil is marching now. So if you see two people marching, you can guess that the whole group is marching. So sometimes the interaction can be in th th those ways. So we try to process the signal to infer those type of interactions uh, in the brain. So to give them an, an idea, so I show the beginning pairs of signals. Now I, I throw in like three signals, and I want to share track where these three areas in the brain, they share some information, they communicate simultaneously. And then instead of storing these in a matrix, I store in a 3D matrix. So areas A, B, C in the brain has communication X, Y, Z. And then with, with that, you can build this uh, uh, so-called high order network. So in the top, uh, you can see like the, the nodes and the, the links, and in the bottom you can see like triplets and quadruplets and so on. This is very nice at the beginning, but in the end you see that you can cover the brain with triplets and quadruplets very quick. So you also had to develop a pipeline to, to check for the most important interactions in the brain. So that's how, how you can make an overview of the project. So it starts with the signal, check the most important interactions that are beyond pairs, and then from these you create this uh, hypergraph or, or high order network, and then sh check for the most important triplets in the brain and what's the meaning of those, those interactions. So that said, we can now show a bit of the results. So then you can also create an, a brain network, but now it will be a network of triplets. So if you see these four tri triangles on top, like three, triangle, triangle three talks to triangle one, to two and four, etc. So you have some simple network. You can make these also in the brain, and then you can see that this also has lots of clusters, much clusters than what we know, and those clusters, they are what they call these high order hubs. So they, they have different meaning, and they, when you project back into the brain, they will have a possible interpretation that are compatible with brain functioning. So the first result we want to show is that the most important triplet under certain considerations are the pre and post central gyros. So when you filter on this pipeline, you see that the pre and post central gyros are, are uh, popping up as uh, hubs, and then these are due to the fact that they are responsible for uh, somato and motor uh, cortices, and uh, they kind of fire together. So when you raise your hand, you, f you fire both the, the motor and the sensorial part of this cortex, and then they act as a triplet. So if this is true, maybe with these ideas, you can also go to the individual level. So we could check whether motor skills of those individuals, they would correlate with those triplets, and that was the case, so the science of individuality. So we found that the gate speed of 
those uh, individuals, they correlate with uh, the strength of one of those triplets, particularly the pre, post, central gyrus and the angular gyrus. So if you get the interaction, the communication between those three areas, you can predict statistically uh, the gate speed of the individuals. So that was a striking example because it was only data-driven. And then if you go to other uh, areas, you can also see that vision works kind of like that. So one of the other uh, hubs, our vision hubs, like you get the left and right cuneus because they, you, you process a vision the cuneus from left and, and right eye. So okay, you can see in the top, you see that they fire also together. So then the visual processing is also high order. And then another interesting fact about the synergistic interactions that uh, we know about the brain differences in, in structural connectomes, but in functional connectomes it is very hard to see. If you only see for synergistic interactions, it was recently published uh, three months ago in Nature Communications that you can differentiate between uh, macaques and humans. And that is interesting because that uh, one of the results that those kind of interactions mediate interaction between cortical and subcortical areas. I show now one high order thalamus that we was shown uh, earlier. That's uh, this hub, uh, synergistic hub, make uh, triplets between thalamus, frontal areas, and subcortical areas. So with that, uh, we want to thank you for your attention and time. Uh, we propose this heuristic to build these high order networks uh, and apply it to fMRI data. We found the most important hubs in healthy individuals and we see potential for multiple applications uh, in clinical and also network neuroscience. So and of course, this was not done alone, it was in a team. I thank a lot for Multinet team where I belong, plus the IES members, especially uh, HICWACS, and thanks for your attention. I look forward to your questions. <laughs>